Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we shall take a look at principal component analysis or PCA. Uh, we shall see uh, some of its objectives and we shall also take a look at the big idea um, of PCA. So what are its objectives? It is a data reduction technique. The idea is to replace several variables by fewer ones. So uh, if you think of your final grade, right, it is also a data uh, reduction uh, technique, right? So your final grade is uh, built by uh, replacing several variables, which is your grades in your homeworks and assignments and quizzes and exams and so on into one final number. So your final grade is some kind of a data um, is obtained by some kind of a data reduction technique. So PCA is a data reduction technique as well. We want to replace many variables by a fewer ones. And when we do this, we do not want to lose information. So we want to retain as much information as possible from the data. That makes sense, right? So what do I mean by information? Information in the data basically means variability in the data. I don't want to use the variation or the variability in my data set when I reduce the number of variables. And it is also helpful if the new variables are uncorrelated, right? Um, so if you think of uh, statistical techniques like regression, um, if your predictor variables are highly correlated, you will run into issues while uh, uh, while implementing regression. However, if your variables are uncorrelated, then things run pretty smoothly, right? So PCA can help us implement or, or these variables that are obtained from this PCA technique can help us run some of the other statistical techniques smoothly. So to summarize, PCA aims to reduce the dimension of the data. When it does so, it wants to retain as much information as possible. Retaining information is the same as retaining or maximizing the variability in your data. And we want the variables to be, or the new variables to be uncorrelated. So let's see how can we, um, how can we look at this more mathematically or in other words, let's see what is the big idea, right? What is the idea behind PCA? So say you have a study where you want to, uh, uh, where that involves P variables. Uh, so this random vector X has P dimensions. So Y1 basically is a linear combination of your P variables. Y2 is a different linear combination of your p variables and so on until yp is another is a, is a new uh, p is a new combination of your p variables so y1 y2 yp right we have p new variables which are linear combinations of your original p variables so at this point, you might be wondering, right, we have p variables uh, x1 through xp that are the original ones. And we have uh, new p variables, which is y1 to yp, right? How are we reducing the dimensions, right? We still have p new variables. So what is the point of this? That's a legitimate question and we'll, uh, and I'll get back to it uh, uh, later on. So just for convenience, we are going to think of y1, uh, we are going to write it as a1 transpose x, where a1 contains all of the constants or, or these coefficients of the linear combination. a2 contains all of the constants for y2, and ap contains all of the constants for yp, right? So yp is basically nothing but a p transpose x. So it's a good idea to keep uh, a note or track of all of these notations and uh, we will be using a lot of vectors and matrix uh, matrices in this course and this and especially in PCA. 
So how do we choose all of these linear combinations, right? So remember our goal, uh, reduce dimension, uh, retain variability, and uh, we want uncorrelated variables, right? So we want to choose all of these constants such that these three conditions are satisfied. So let's see. So for y1, um, we want to choose a1, right, uh, to retain the variability or the information. So basically we want to find the constants that maximize this variance. So we want a1 to maximize this variance of a1 transpose x. Think about a random variable for a second, any random variable, um, say, right? And if you multiply that random variable by 10, right? So variability of, um, say your variable is w. So variance of 10 times w is greater than variance of w variance of 100 times w is greater than variance of w variance of million times w is greater than variance of 100 times w so what i'm trying to say is i can or we can keep on increasing variance by taking larger values for a but we don't want to do that that is not very informative so we're going to put this additional constraint we want to choose these constants such that this a1 transpose a1 or norm of the vector a1 is 1, right? So this stops us from artificially inflating the variance. So y1 is such that uh, variance is maximized and it satisfies this condition. And y1 is the first principal component. y2 again, we choose a2, right? We choose this vector a2 such that the linear combination has maximum variance subject to this condition that norm of a2 is 1 and additional condition now that a2 uh, or sorry uh, additional condition that uh, a1x and a2x this should be transpose here right a1 transpose x and a2 transpose x is equal to 0 that is y1 and y2 are uncorrelated in gen oh and y2 is the second principal component so in general for uh, yi right we choose this vector ai to maximize the uh, variance of this linear combination subject to this condition that the norm of vector ai is 1 and yi is uncorrelated with all of the previous principal components, right? So covariance of A1 transpose X and AI transpose X is zero for I going from one to I minus one. So YI is uncorrelated with all of the previous principal components and YI is the ith principal component. So you can see that we are constructing these new variables, which are basically the principal components, uh, such that they maximize the variance in some sense, and they're uncorrelated with each other. So two of the three objectives, right, that I mentioned are satisfied here. Okay, so how do we get the dimension reduction, right? We still have those P principal components, right? Um, so in general, if our data has P variables, we typically need P principal uh, components or all the principal components to reproduce the total variability of the system. However, sometimes it's possible that majority of the variability can be found in a smaller number of components. So suppose you have 20 variables, right? And you do the, you calculate the principal components and it turns out that the first three principal components amount for 99% of variability. So in this case, instead of looking at all the 20 variables, you will consider only the first three principal components. So this is what is meant by data reduction. Remember, the first three principal components are all linear combinations of all of your 20 variables. 
so all of this will make much more sense when we actually um, uh, work with actual problems so if you think of a large rectangular plate right a plate is typically a three-dimensional object so it has three dimensions uh, however for all practical purposes you can think of uh, think of the plate as a two-dimensional object right there's not nothing much lost if you think of it as a flat uh, com as a completely flat object so PCA is attempting to represent your data in a space that has fewer dimensions right so originally the data had p dimensions it was in a p dimensional space and when and maybe the first three principal components account for i don't know 99 or maybe 95 percent of variation uh, so the um, so the new space uh, right so if we so we just take the first three principal components uh, so the new space that we're considering has just three dimensions So again, when discarding higher dimensions, um, we want the loss to be minimal. However, a certain amount of information will be lost, right? Loss of information is not avoidable. We just want to minimize this. So another way to think of principal components is, as, uh, is uh, that they represent essential features of the data set. They're extracting important features of your data. Uh, so I've given you a brief, a very high level overview of PCA does and what it aims to achieve. However, at this point, if I were to give you a data set and ask you to give me the principal components, uh, you would not know how to do so. Um, so uh, we will be looking at how to actually derive or actually compute principal components. But before that, there is a bit of um, a bit of review of matrix algebra is required. So we'll be doing that in the next video. That's all for this video. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.